One of the great Charlie Brown soundtrack recordings by Vince Guaraldi has become synonymous with Halloween and Thanksgiving. It's a sound that kind of defines this time of year, and I want to take a look at one song in particular that I think has one of the coolest chord progressions that Vince Guaraldi ever wrote. <laughs> That, right there, is just astoundingly good. And it has a sound to it that I think is like shockingly modern. It does some incredibly cool things with harmony and melody that I think in 1966, when this was recorded, were on the cutting edge of what was going on in music. Let's take a look at this because it is absolutely unbelievable. So the melody, and this is, this is one of the things I think makes it so incredibly cool. The melody, kind of sits right here on this G note for a little bit as the chords move underneath it. And this is something that is kind of a very modern sound, especially when we consider some of the voicing that's going on here. So, so we have this C minor seven chord. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna move the chord down a half step, but the way we're gonna voice it gives it this incredibly modern sound. Check this out. Oh, that chord is absolutely beautiful. And when we look at how we're constructing it, it begs the question, what chord actually is this, right? Because we're playing a B on the bottom and a D, which could tell us that it's a B minor chord of some kind, right? But does it sound like a B minor chord to you? Because to me, not really. If I played this G as an F sharp, well, now it sounds like a B minor chord, but now the melody is a little strange, right? It works just fine, but that feels probably more correct, right? So maybe this is a B minor chord, but how would we describe it if it were? Well, it's a B minor, and we have the seventh, B minor seven, but then this note, what is that? Well, let's figure out what we might call that. So we have one, minor three, five, minor seven with a sharp five and we get that sound right that to me is maybe the most accurate way to describe this because we're coming from c minor seven b minor seven our next chord is b flat minor seven so if we're calling this just a chromatic movement down that's kind of what it is but because we have this melody that we're hanging on to it necessitates changing this chord a little bit to make that melody flow just a little better. That, <laughs> that sequence of chords is astoundingly beautiful. So let's go with that. Let's call this C minor seven, B minor seven, sharp five. What a cool chord. That chord, B minor seven, sharp five, you know what it sounds like? What does it sound like? Does this note sound like home to you? Because it doesn't to me. You know what does? G. It sounds to me like a G major chord that we've just taken the third of and put that in the bass. That's what it sounds like to me. So as you can see, the lesson, the takeaway from all of this is that when we talk about chords, there's not necessarily one way to describe them. Sometimes there's a way that we can describe a chord that is important to understand for its functionality, meaning how we are using it to get us from one place to the next in a tune. But it's just a collection of notes. And that collection of notes can be looked at a bunch of different ways, depending on what's easiest for us to understand. For you, it might be easier to think of this as a G major chord, like a G major add nine, right? Just with the third in the bass. That's all, right? That's a perfectly valid way to look at this. We can also look at it as a B minor chord, because if we're passing through that, it would make sense to call it that on our way to B flat minor, to E flat dominant, right? So all of these things are interchangeable. Even though there might be like a correct way to refer to a chord, it's important not to get caught up on any of that stuff and really just go with what works best for you, what helps you understand the harmony of a tune. So that chord brings us into this B flat minor, which we just basically play like a two, five while we're still holding on to that G in the melody. What a brilliant melody as we let this harmony pass through underneath it. 
And now we get our first movement in the melody. And we're still sticking with this incredibly beautiful modern sounding harmony. And then we continue our downward trajectory. And it almost feels like we resolved there, except we only stay there for a moment because we immediately turn it around to go back to the top there. So our melody hovering around G for the vast majority of this, and we're allowing the harmony to just kind of slide downward underneath it. The entire harmony is in this downward, almost chromatic downward trajectory, and it just gives it this constant feeling of moving towards a resolution, which we're only given for a brief moment and then turn it around back to the top. Down. Here's an exception, we go a two, five, but we immediately jump back in to where we were. Downward chromatically. Chromatic. Still going. And then we bring it to E flat. Still down. And then we have a two, five, back to that C minor. I mean, we could even, if you wanted to, we could actually take, we could make this still chromatic by using the tritone substitution of this G dominant chord, which would sound like this. And that would lead us right back in. So we would essentially have an entire tune where the A section and the B section, they're written with this straight downward trajectory harmonically, and it just never stops. We just go. going forever and ever until we get to the end of the second A section and then we go to a bridge. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable. Yeah. Back into it back into the A section. So this tune, if we look at the form, it's a pretty classic jazz chord progression form of A, A, B, A. The A sections, of course, are the thing that we talked about. That's an A section, so we play that two times, and at the end of the second one, we get this beautiful transition into the bridge. And now our bridge is in G major, which is a beautiful, beautiful change from this C minor place that we were before. And then we have this gorgeous melody. And when we pair that with the harmony, we're going one, minor four, let's go. Just back and forth, one to minor four, one to minor four. Such a simple bridge, but what, I mean, it's just so effective coming from this place that we were before with this more complex descending harmony that had a very sort of minor sound to it. And now we're in this, we've opened it up into this, ah, this resolution into a major, very bright sounding but very sweet sounding, right? Very sentimental with that C minor chord. And the fact that we let that major seventh play over top, C minor major seven, gorgeous. And I think that time we use a flat seven, so we're using a C minor seven. There's our minor major seven again. And then to get us back, we go G major, F sharp augmented. This is just like a F6, I guess. And then we just go back to our G7 five chord. Such a simple, brilliantly written chord progression and melody. In 1966, Vince Guaraldi was doing some of his 
best work, right? Just two years before, in 1964, he had done the recording session for the Charlie Brown Christmas special, which, as we know, is some of Fitzgeraldi's most famous, most popular work, and perhaps some of the most popular jazz ever recorded. You know, and it's funny, like, trying to play over this, like, improvising over this, it's, it's kind of difficult, actually. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to sit with that for a little bit to try to figure out what to even do over it. But it's an incredibly, incredibly beautiful chord progression. And I think it's one of Vince Guaraldi's best. You guys, that's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna check out more Vince Guaraldi content, we actually covered a Charlie Brown Christmas. Oh man, was that a couple years ago now? I feel like it's, yeah, it's been a minute, I think. But that video dug into the Charlie Brown Christmas music pretty extensively. So if you wanna check that out, there's a link right here somewhere in the video and you can go watch that. That's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching and we will We'll see you in the next one.